Hi there guys, this is 9G and possibly 9H, depending on how far I get time-wise. Um, we're talking about um, matrix transformations using probabilities here. And we're talking about going from one state to another, where we're always depending on the previous outcome. Okay, so for example, if it rained yesterday, then what's the probability of it raining today? And the probabilities will also will always be based on the previous outcome of that event. Um, and these systems are called Markov chains, by the way. So where we're always using a probability which is dependent on just the previous outcome. So conditional probabilities, basically. So, okay, so there is a pretty nice question here. So I'm going to kind of take this from the question and then go backwards through a bit of theory here to talk about transition state diagrams and, and such like. Okay, um, the, the pretty nice example, they talk about a dockless bicycle company, Mathbike, um, hires bicycles in a city through a mobile phone app. Users can unlock a bicycle with their smartphone, ride it to, to their uh, destination and then lock the bicycle. Um, so there are three choices as to where you can start and where you can end. So you can start in the inner zone, the outer zone, or the or the central business dis district, and of course you can end up in those places too. Too. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, personally, I see this on a daily basis. I see that there's a guy at the end of the evening or the end of the day who who moves a whole set of bikes from a really popular place where bikes have ended up to another place using a trailer on the back of a bicycle in fact so he's carrying several bikes back across to the other side of town essentially to, to move these bikes and so this is kind of what we're looking at this problem of where do things end up if we've got certain probabilities of where they might end up after the end of the day then what would happen if you didn't have that person moving bikes each day where would you end up? Um, where would all of the bikes end up, for example? Okay, so let's get rid of me. We don't need a picture of me. Um, and so they're, they're coming up with this, this um, some stats for this as well. They're saying 50% of the bicycles rented in zone C remained in zone C, 30% were left in zone I, and 20% were left in zone O. Okay, so then it asks us with all this information. It says, show this information in a transition state diagram. Okay, we'll make one of those in a second. Then show this information in a transition matrix. So it will be quite easy to make to change from this transition state diagram to transition matrix. By the way, that's what the state diagram is going to look like. And then uh, it says determine the probability that after three days the bicycle started in C is now in O. Okay. Now let's just go back through a bit of theory here. So there's a nice little box up at the top. I've just copied this one as well. It says transition transition matrix is a square matrix. It has to be a square matrix because all, all of the outcomes where you start need to be still available at the end. So we're talking maybe, for example, if there's three states at the start, then there need to be three outcome states as well. So, um, and it summarizes the transition state diagram. It describes the probabilities of moving from one state in a diagram to another state. The sum of each column of the transition matrix is one. That's basically the sum of your probabilities. Okay, and the transition matrix is extremely useful when there are more than two states in a system, and, which, and when you wish to predict states of a system after several time periods. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's going to be pretty good to do on your calculator. Right, so let's just look at, um, let's just go back a bit. So this is pretty useful. Here they're talking about probabilities of it being dry or being wet on a day after it's already been dry the day before. And this comes from a whole set of statistics here, which is an investigation, but ultimately just the theory is fine here, okay? So they're coming up with some probabilities, and these are your transition probabilities. So this is what creates your... Um, Markov chains, if you like. I think there's probably a description of a Markov chain down here as well. Yeah, Markov chain is a system in which the probability of each event depends only on the state of the previous event. So, for example, um, whether it's dry the day 
after it's previously been dry. The, it, the, the dependency there is only based on what happened the day before. So this is what happens after it's been dry, probability of 0 0.6 being dry again, or 0 0.4 being wet, according to our probabilities that we found through um, the previous investigation here. And if it's been wet one day, then the probability of it being wet the following day increases to 0.5, chance of being wet, and then decreases for being dry. Okay, so here are the sum of your probabilities adding to one again. And again, here are the probabilities add to one as well. There is a 100% chance that it will either be dry or wet, no matter what happened on the previous day. Now, in terms of a transition state diagram, if you put wet and dry here, then you can see the probability of it being dry again after being dry, dry the previous day loops back onto dry as 0 0.6, and it loops onto wet as 0 0.4. Again, those two probabilities leaving dry need to sum to one. And of course, probability of it being wet followed by it being wet again is this 0 0.5, so it loops back onto itself, and 0 0.5 transitions to dry. Okay, now we can put this in terms of a matrix, in terms of here's the current state, dry or wet, and here is the future state here. So again, it's the sum of these two which will add to one, and the sum of the column will add to one here as well. Okay, so 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 gives you one. So future state being dry, followed by previous state being dry, is a 0 0.6 transition probability there. Okay, so we're gonna try and make one of these for our example. So let's go to the example now. And let's go to this one here. Let's just steal this one here. So example 10. Okay. So Dockless Bike Company, I might just make that a little smaller actually. Let's just make it a bit smaller. So it's not taking up quite so much room. And here we go. So in terms of a diagram, we're going to need to have all of our three states on there. And I'm just going to copy what they've done, basically. So I'm going to have the O there and the I here and the C here. And um, again, if we've got O to O, you can put these things in bubbles if you wave if you want, but I'm not going to here just for convenience sake. So that's O going to O here, it's going to be 0 0.6. So where have I just found that? That's 60% of the bicycles have started in the wrong place. Um, rented in O, remain in O, and 30% were left in I. So 30% then go across here, so that's a 0 0.3, and 10% were left in C. So we're going to go 0 0.1 goes across to C. Now you can do that for each of these things. So 50% for zone C remain in C. So there's 50%, 0 0.5 going there. And you've got 30% going to I. Okay, so 30% going to I there. And we've got, uh, and 20% are going to O. So we've got 20% there going to O. So 0 0.2 there. And if we finish the diagram off here, we'll get uh, 0 0.35 there. And uh, we're getting 0 0.3 on there. And we're getting 0 0.35 on there as well. Now, you can see that when the book has done this, uh, it's followed all the way around on the outside in one direction. Um, that's not completely necessary, but maybe it's slightly neater. So the book is slightly different the way in which they did it. Okay, now show this information, so that's part A done, by the way. Show this information on a transition matrix. Now, transition matrix, remember, is going to be your ones, um, your current ones. And so it's current. And on the other one, it's going to be what happens by the end of the day. Okay, so we're going to put in here C, I, O, and then we're going to get C, I, and O here as well. And, of course, C to C. Uh, was it already gave us out um, was that uh, 0 0.5 okay and then C to I again C to I was 
uh, or was it C to I was started in C and 30% were left in I, so that's 0 0.3, and then 20% were left in O, so it's 0 0.2. And of course, you can do this for all of all of these, and of course, in each time, your sum of your column is going to be equal to 1. So we've got 0 0.5 there, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and then for I, we have 35%, so 0 0.35. And I to O was 0.35 as well. And then I to C was 0 0.3. Uh, C to I, no, we've done that, sorry. O to O was 0 0.6. You can skip this if you want. <laughs> Forward, fast forward a little bit. So you've got 0 0.6 there, and 0 to I is uh, 0 0.3. And then zero, or sorry, outer rather, O to um, O to O was zero point six. I've messed up there, haven't I? Zero point six. So hang on, O to C was O to C was zero point one. Okay, let's just think if I messed up anywhere else. Um, so I to I was zero point three five. Yeah, I kind of messed up there. So it was I to I. Sorry about that. And then I to C was 0 0.3. So there we go. That sorted that out. I got them in the right wrong order. So that was 0 0.35 there, okay? The same as this one here. Okay, now um, each of those columns adds to one, so that's good. And then um, following this, it says determine the probability that after three days, the bicycle that started in C now is in O. So we need to do this three times over. This transition matrix um, after three days, so it's in the evening of the third day, so it's going to go through three transformations here, but it's the same matrix every single time. So we need this transition matrix, if you like, done three times over. Okay, let's take the answer for that one just to speed things up a bit. Okay, so again, there was our answers. There were our answers. And here we go, let's go to this one. So they've done this as well. They've done it using a calculator. And let's just, so they're saying, um, determine the probability that after three days, a bicycle that started in C is now in O. Okay, so here's what comes out on your calculator. We're talking about starting in C. So C was the original column, so C, I, O, and ending in O. So again, let's just write in here, C, I, O. So we're looking for this one here. So started in C on the first day, but after three days, we're getting out C, I, O there. So we should get 0 0.377. That's what I'm getting. Read off the number in column, in the C column. So in the C column and in the O row which is 0 0.411. Mm, that's not true, is it? That's O followed by O. So they're wrong there. Quick to say that they're wrong. It should be this one here. So that's, that's the one where they end up. Okay, so that's C, I, O. Let's just check the way in which they've done that. If they have written everything in that way around. Yeah, so they've got C, I, O. So it's, yeah. It's got to be the the one in the bottom left hand corner. So I think they've picked the wrong one out there. They've picked out they've picked out this one, I think, which is O followed by O, which doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that's probably corrected in the digital digital copy of the book. Okay, so let's see if there's anything following this. No, there's nothing following this. Um, in the next exercise, which I think I'll do later on, to be honest because I'm running out of time, I've got to go to a meeting. Um, so in the next one, they talk about saying, well, what happens if you do this 50 times? You know, and obviously you can do that to the power of 50. And also what happens if we now applied this to a particular coordinate point? So if you applied this to a particular set of values, so you had um, 100 bikes at C in the first place, in the first day, and maybe... 50 bikes in I and uh, 10 bikes at O, 
then if you've got that vector which you apply this matrix to, then you can see what, where these bikes should end up at the end of several transformations through this um, transition state matrix. Okay, um, and also, while I'm at it, they always deal with regular transition matrices. And regular transition matrices ultimately end up with um, a, 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 a state which is sort of a, a, a convergent state. So where it's not oscillating wildly or not going kind of crazy, it's always ending up with some convergent set of numbers. And they're the ones which we look at in this book and we don't consider any other ones. Um, and that, that always happens, by the way, if you have um, the same, essentially the same column every time over in your matrix. So whatever's in the first column, you'll find in the second and the third, for example. Okay, well, I've pretty much done nine H there, but uh, obviously have a go at the exercise in 9G first. So there we go. There's this one here. And there are five questions there. And then we're talking about steady state systems in the next one. Thanks for listening, guys. Good luck with the exercise and uh, hope to see you for the next one.